Are you a nursing student that's learning how to perform physical assessments? There's a lot to know and do during a physical assessment, but it starts with a few basics. Today, we're reviewing the four types of physical assessment techniques that every nurse needs to know and do. Stay right here, you don't wanna miss this. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Jess B and this is LJ. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel was created to support nursing and healthcare students just like you. As a nursing professor and educator, I offer tips and expert advice that will help you succeed in school and in your new career. If this is something that you're interested in, show me some love and support. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on weekly videos. Today, we're starting with the basics of how nurses perform physical assessments and the four techniques that are used to do this. We'll uncover the basics and discuss a brief overview of each skill. Here they are. Number one, inspection. Number two, palpation. Number three, percussion. And number four, auscultation. When you use these four assessment techniques, it helps to validate the information that the client has told you or that you have gathered from the client's health history. Plus, the information you collect from using these techniques can verify a suspected physical diagnosis. The moment you lay eyes on your client, you're using the technique of inspection. Inspection is typically the first assessment technique used and it's ongoing throughout the entire encounter with the client. Inspection involves using vision and smell to consciously observe the client. So imagine yourself for a second. You walk into the client's room and you notice how they are breathing. Just by looking at your client, you can see whether they're breathing fast, whether their nail beds are turning cyanotic or blue. Similarly, if you are the triage nurse in the emergency department and you are assessing an injured ankle, for example, you wanna make sure you are inspecting the full body part and ensure there's adequate lighting so you can see properly. You might even ask the client to remove their sock and remove their shoe so you can adequately inspect the ankle. You're looking for things like color, obvious deformity, swelling, and looking for cuts or scrapes or bruises. These are all findings that you can identify through your eyes and using the technique of inspection. The second assessment technique we'll talk about is palpation. When we palpate something, we're using touch purposefully to obtain specific information. So make sure your hands are clean and warm and your fingernails aren't going to scrape or injure your client, right? Now, if you said to me, I feel like I have the chills, I might palpate your forehead like this, okay? I might check to see if you are warm and have a fever. This is an example of palpation where I use the, um, the back side of my hand, or I could use the palm or surface of my hand, the palm of my hand to assess for temperature. Our hands are assessment tools, okay? So when you palpate, you're using your fingertips or your finger pads, your metacarpal phalangeal joints, okay? The back of your hand, even the dorsal back of, or back of the hand, as I said, as well as the ulnar surface of the hand, the pinky side, okay? Each part of the hand can be used to assess temperature, moisture, texture, okay, like when we're feeling skin, texture, and even vibration. We can also palpate either lightly or deeply and feel those things like the presence of masses, pulsations, edema or swelling, and the shape, size, and position of organs all through palpation. When I think about percussion, I think of beats, right? I think of drums. What good is a song without percussion, right? In health assessment, percussion is a technique of striking one object against another to cause vibrations that produce sound, right? So think of it like vibrations. We wanna create vibrations. So when you strike an object, the sound differs depending on the density of what lies underneath it. So knocking on a surface when there is air behind it, for example, will sound differently than if there is fluid or something solid behind it. I'll give you an example. Let's say you wanna hang a picture on the wall in a room, OK? 
okay? You know where to place the nail, so or you don't know where to place the nail, excuse me, and you start knocking on the wall to locate a stud, right? You knock on different areas of the wall and you might hear a hollow sound, especially if it's just air behind the wall, or when you finally hit that stud, you'll know because it sounds much denser, right? It sounds dense. Why is it sounding more dense? Because there's a piece of wood behind the wall, something solid. There's something beneath the surface. So the same principle applies to percussion of the body parts, right? The density of the underlying structure produces characteristic sounds, which help us determine if things underneath the surface are normal or abnormal. Now, although we can pretty much percuss any part of the body, we usually use percussion when assessing the thorax, so the chest, and the abdomen. Finally, we have auscultation. Auscultation is the act of listening intently to the voluntary and involuntary sounds produced by the body. This is where it gets fun because we can get to use our handy little stethoscope. Now, before you auscultate, make sure you have a quiet environment and that you know how to use your stethoscope correctly. You have no idea how many students I've seen in labs using their stethoscopes incorrectly. If you need a refresher and a few basics on how to use your stethoscope, I've got a quick tutorial on that, so I'll include the link below. Auscultation requires a great deal of concentration and focus. Want a little tip for beginners? Sometimes it helps to close your eyes during the auscultation process to help you isolate the sound and prevent other distractions. I had to also figure out how to get the ear pieces to fit nice and snugly in my ears. Now, even though I placed the stethoscope in my ears correctly, it sometimes took a bit of head nodding, kind of like this, right? Um, to get the right fit and hear the amplified sounds directly and clearly without all the other background noises. Remember, auscultation is a skill that requires practice and patience. Don't expect to become an expert overnight. Just continue to practice and eventually you'll train your ears. Performing a physical assessment of your client requires you to use these four techniques, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Sometimes they happen concurrently or at the same time, and in other instances, you perform them in a sequence. A good rule of thumb to follow if you're not sure which technique to do first is to progress from the least intrusive to the most intrusive. In other words, perform the assessment technique that causes the least discomfort to the client in order to prevent anxiety, fear, and muscle guarding, which could affect the assessment results. Now, there is an exception to this rule, and that is when you perform an abdominal assessment. If you know the reason why an abdominal assessment is performed in a specific order, let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful and good luck with your next physical assessment. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on the JLT channel today. I promise I've got more good content for you like this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and even share this video with a friend because it's just like that. <laughs>